which is worse, the SC or the SS genotype? Hey now, take a step outside and seize the day now. Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Sylvia, a general practitioner and writer. And this is Ask Away Health, where we provide you with direction and clarity about everything medical. In today's video, I'm looking at another type of inherited abnormal hemoglobin disease. In this case, it's hemoglobin C and how those with the condition are affected. In addition, we consider who gets the worst disease, people who have the SS genotype, that's sickle cell anemia, or people who have the SC genotype. First, we're all familiar with hemoglobin S. It was actually the first type of abnormal hemoglobin detected and it's known as the abnormal type of hemoglobin protein which causes the red blood cell that carries it to develop a sickle shell like a crescent moon different from the normal disc like shape that the red blood cell has now how is hemoglobin classified i promise i'm not going to be too technical so just stick with me so hemoglobin so hemoglobin is a protein that consists of different chains and the structure of these chains is controlled by our genes. Now there are different types of hemoglobin and one of the ways that we can classify or differentiate them is by a process called electrophoresis. Electrophoresis just means using electricity or electric current to separate a compound into its different parts. And so by identifying the different parts of the hemoglobin proteins, we've come up with different hemoglobins like hemoglobin A, hemoglobin C, hemoglobin D, hemoglobin E, hemoglobin F, all named alphabetically in the order that they were discovered except for um, hemoglobin S, which like I said was the first abnormal hemoglobin type detected. Now the thing is, even among a particular hemoglobin type, for example hemoglobin C, there could still be structural differences. So these different structural types will be dis designated based on the city or location where they were discovered. For example, hemoglobin C, Harlem, or hemoglobin S, Memphis. Okay, so now that we've got that little bit of technology out of the way, the next question is, how are hemoglobin C and hemoglobin S different? They're both abnormal hemoglobins, but let's start with hemoglobin S. Hemoglobin S is different from the normal or healthy adult hemoglobin type A. And the difference is one specific protein type change between S and A. And this is exactly the same thing with hemoglobin C. That is, the difference between hemoglobin A and hemoglobin C is that there's just one specific protein that's different in the makeup of both molecules. So what we're saying is that in the hemoglobin A, which is the healthy, normal um, adult hemoglobin, along position six of the hemoglobin protein chains, where we normally have a protein called glutamic acid, in hemoglobin S, in that same position six, what you have is a protein called valine, and in hemoglobin C, the protein in exactly that same position is replaced by one called lysine. So the differences in these hemoglobin types have um, happened because of a change in the type of protein that's occurring at those specific positions. Okay, so we're talking about hemoglobin C conditions. What are they? Now first, hemoglobin C is one of the most common hemoglobin variants found in the general population. And the inheritance for hemoglobin C is quite similar to the way that people inherit hemoglobin S. Now, I have talked about how the hemoglobin um, S gene is inherited in one of my videos. I'm going to put a link for you to that in the description box below. So if you've not seen that video, make sure you check it out. But basically what it means is that for somebody to have the hemoglobin C gene, they would have inherited that gene from one or both of their parents. The most common areas where the hemoglobin C gene is found is in populations in Africa, populations in South and Central America, as well as some populations in South Europe. 
However, population studies indicate that the country with the highest occurrence of the hemoglobin C is a country called Burkina Faso in West Africa. Now, if you inherit only one C gene from one of your parents and a normal or healthy um, A gene from your other parent, then you have the genotype hemoglobin AC and are a carrier for hemoglobin C or are said to have the trait for hemoglobin C. People with the hemoglobin C carrier state appear generally healthy, um, similar to those with the hemoglobin AS genotype without any significant or just very rare illnesses compared to those with the hemoglobin SS genotype. Some studies have suggested that people with the AC genotype have a protection or are protected against malaria in a similar fashion to those with the AS genotype but other studies have refuted that so there's no conclusion, it's not conclusive about that particular fact um, whether or not being um, an AC or having a hemoglobin C carrier status protects you from the malaria infection. So guys, if you have any questions about the hemoglobin AC or inheritance, let me know in the comments. But I think this is a good time for me to let anyone watching who is interested in getting the seven point checklist, free seven point checklist that I've designed for people with AS genotype. The seven important issues that you must consider if you're somebody or you must be aware of if you're someone who has the AS genotype. Make sure you stick around to the end of this video and I'm going to tell you how you can get access to the checklist. Next, let's talk about individuals with the hemoglobin CC genotype who are also individuals that are known as having the hemoglobin C disease. So this condition develops when a person inherits the two abnormal C gene copies from both parents. Unlike those with the SS genotype, people with the CC genotype do not end up with as severe a clinical disease, but they do form abnormal hemoglobin which could change the structure and appearance of their red blood cells and possibly affect the way those cells carry oxygen. In that case, they would end up with only a mild degree of destruction of their red cells and develop milder anemia compared to those with um, the hemoglobin SS genotype. And so their clinical condition is a lot less severe compared to individuals with the SS genotype. Now the third category of people with the hemoglobin C condition are the people with the hemoglobin SC genotype and they are known as having hemoglobin SC disease. And so as you obviously will realize, these individuals have inherited one abnormal C gene from one parent and one abnormal S gene from the other parent. Now this is not an unusual development, for example, if the parents are AS genotype and AC genotype or if the parents are SS genotype and AC genotype or if the parents are a CC genotype individual um, um, having children together with an SS genotype. In all these scenarios potentially the children could have the SC genotype. Okay so this can have significant consequences. Parents in this condition should have genetic counselling if that is available and guidance about options available to them for having children together. With that said, we have found out that illness associated with people having the hemoglobin SC disease are similar but they are less severe than people with the hemoglobin SS disease. For instance, People with hemoglobin SC will have generally healthy growth and development or if not slightly less than expected which is compared to people with hemoglobin SS who generally have poorer uh, development and health um, compared to their peers. You can see that the people with SC genotype have a better um, health profile. The abnormal red blood cells found in hemoglobin SC individuals can sickle or can also lead to blocked vessel blood vessels causing crises similar to people with hemoglobin SS. 
but this is less frequent than in people with hemoglobin SS disease. On the other hand, there are some complications that could happen in people with hemoglobin SC that are more common um, than in people with hemoglobin SS. One of them is damage to the eye leading to blindness, while the other is injury or damage to the large bone of the hip joint, specifically from the interruption of blood supply that can happen in cases of um, people with hemoglobin SC and it's been found to happen most often amongst women who are pregnant, women with the hemoglobin SC genotype who are pregnant. So that answers the question, who has the more severe disease between people with hemoglobin SC and hemoglobin SS genotypes? Hope you found that useful. Obviously, genetic counseling is essential, crucial um, with either of these conditions and other um, abnormal hemoglobin diseases because if co-inheritance happens, you can see how significant illness can result. So thank you for watching the, to the end of the video. Like I promised, I'm going to put um, a link in the description below for the seven point checklist, which has been designed for people with the AS genotype. And it will also apply to people who have um, AC genotype or any form of carrier state for um, many abnormal hemoglobin diseases. These are um, issues and things to consider um, in terms of your general health and what options there could be for having children with other people. So it's worth, really worth um, getting a copy of this. It's free. Just go to the link in the description box below for your copy. Thank you so much for watching. If this video has been useful, make sure you like it and share it with a friend. If it's the first time that you're joining us on this channel, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that every time we publish a new video on Saturdays, you'll be the first to know about it. Next, we're going to be looking um, at sickle cell anemia and the difference between that and sickle cell disease. Also, we'll be talking about the cure and treatment for sickle cell anemia in 2020, so make sure you don't miss any of those videos. Have a good day and I will see you again soon.